In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Lightroom's Tone Curve tool to help balance the exposure of an image. If you want to follow along, you can do that by downloading the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. Of course, we are dealing with a scene with a huge tonal range, going from super bright highlights in the sky to very deep shadows in the foreground. So it makes sense to merge an HDR image. That's what we do first. So down below in the film strip, select all five images right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. In here we don't need to change anything, just hit the merge button. Lightroom will create this new HDR file for us and that's the image we are going to work on now. So first off, let me do the basic adjustments. With the basic adjustments, I want to get the base exposure of the image right. That means I want to balance the highlights and the shadows a little bit with those sliders. The very first thing I'm going to do is to bring down the highlights just a notch. This will give us more details in the very brightest part of the image. And then let me raise the shadows, which in turn will give us more details in the darkest parts of the image. Right away, this is looking much, much better, but of course we can change things a little more. I'm also going to bring up the blacks, which again will help with those very dark areas of the image. All right. I did forget to change the profile. I don't want to use Adobe Color. Instead, I want to go with Adobe Standard. And again, this will help adjusting the very darkest areas of this shot, making them slightly brighter. And overall, it just reduces the contrast. Once I have set up the exposure like that, the next thing I'm going to do is to adjust the white balance. I want the shot to feel a lot warmer. So let me bring up the temperature to achieve that. As I push up the temperature, I'm just going to pay closer attention to the clouds in the sky because those are kind of the main eye catcher of the image and I want them to look just a little warmer. All right. And I wanna bring up the vibrance which will make those colors more intense. Then let me also bring up the texture, which makes everything just look a bit sharper. And for a very subtle glow effect, I'm going to drop the clarity. All right, that's looking like a proper base image. Let's compare to before real quick. Immediately, you can see a lot more details in the very darkest shadows of the image. Also, the highlights look much, much better thanks to the basic adjustments. Now, what about the tone curve? If you have been watching some of my videos, you know I rarely use the tone curve. In this case, it actually helps making the image better, but I'm not going to use the global tone curve right here. Instead, I want to target different areas of the image and apply tone curve adjustments to these areas separately. That means we're going to use masks for that. And in this scene, we can basically split up in two. We have the sky and we have the foreground portion. These are the areas which I want to affect with separate tone curves each. So I would say let's start with the sky. We can select the sky using a simple sky mask by clicking on this icon right here. That's looking pretty good. Before I'm applying the tone curve, I'm using the tonal sliders up in here to first go over the sky. I'm not solely relying on the tone curve, I'm just using it as an addition for further changes which will help make the sky pop. So first off, I'm going to slightly lower the contrast of the sky. I'm also going to bring up the temperature a little further, introducing just a bit more warmth. Also, I'm going to add saturation, which will make the colors in the sky stronger. And finally, I wanna head down into the effects panel right here and bring up the clarity. The clarity is basically midtones contrast. So using this slider, we're already boosting the contrast of the sky. But of course, now comes the tone curve with which we can further improve the contrast. If you're using the tone curve for the first time, it might seem a little bit unintuitive, but if you try it a few times, you will get the hang of it. So down in the bottom left corner, we have the dark tones, basically the blacks. If I bring that up, I'm making the very darkest tones of, of the sky brighter. On the other hand, in the upper right corner, we have the highlights. So playing around with this thing, we can make the highlights either darker by bringing down this point, or we can make them brighter by bringing it further to the left. Since we want to add contrast and give the sky more punch, we want to make the darker areas darker and the brighter areas brighter, but in a controlled way so we don't introduce any clipping in the brightest or darkest areas. How can we achieve that? I'm going to create a point somewhere 
not all the way down to the left, but right around here where the shadows are. I'm just clicking on that line, which will create a point. Now I can just drag it down very gently. And as I bring down this curve, it will make everything a little bit darker. But for contrast, I don't want to make the highlights darker. Instead, I want to make them slightly brighter. That means I'm going to create a point somewhere up here and I'm going to bring that up. As I play around with the tone curve, I'm always, always paying close attention to the histogram because as I said, we don't want to introduce any clipping. I think something like this looks pretty good. Let me deactivate the tone curve so you can see the difference from before with a rather flat looking sky to after, which has much more punch. Now there's another thing we can do. We can not only adjust the RGB point curve, we can adjust each individual channel, so red, green, and blue on its own. Right now the sky still does have a bit too much blue in it. That means we can go into the blue channel. We're going to take the point for the blue highlights up in the right corner, and I'm going to pull it down. This will introduce more yellow tones in the sky. That is looking perfect. Again, let me deactivate the tone curve to see what difference it makes from before to after. That's how the tone curve is helping me make the sky look better. But what about the foreground? Let's create a new mask. And again, I'm going to choose a select sky mask. Of course, I want to work on the foreground. So we need to invert this mask. Therefore, click on that invert checkbox. And there we have a perfect selection for the foreground. Again, I'm going to start with some basic tonal adjustments using the sliders up in here before adding the tone curve as an addition. First off, I want the whole foreground to be a lot brighter. I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to increase the shadows. Let's very carefully erase the blacks. And I'm also going to bring up the whites. We basically have erased the whole tonal range. That means we are kind of reducing the contrast in the foreground, which looks a bit weird. So I want to counter that by bringing up the base contrast right here. And let me also bring up the temperature because the colors in the foreground are a little bit too cold. At the same time, I'm going to drop the tint to reduce any magenta color cast. So let's drop it like this. And I'm going to bring up the saturation because the foreground could use some more in this case. Okay, that's looking fine so far, but I still think we are lacking contrast. So again, let's use the tone curve. I want to start with the RGB curve right here again. And of course, if you want, we can create way more points than just two. So let me show you with the foreground. I'm going to target some of the deepest color tones right here, and I'm going to bring them down very gently. The thing is, I really don't want the blacks to be too dark. So I'm going to use the point for the blacks and I'm going to very gently raise it. As I raise this point, you can see the curve is changing right here in the middle and the highlights part. So we have to keep that in mind. But I can use a different point up in here and I can slightly bring it up. So like this. And again, I want to use a point somewhere for the brighter tones up in here and again, raise that. So I think that's looking pretty good. Let me deactivate the tone curve to see the difference from before to after. So it's still brighter, but we have a bit more punch. I actually think I might play around with this point a little. So we can get out some more brightness without losing too much contrast. All right, that's looking good for the point curve. Now let's take a look at the blue channel because again, I feel like the foreground is a little bit too cold. So I'm applying the same thing from before. I'm taking the upper point in the blue tone curve channel and I'm going to pull it down slightly to introduce more warmth to the foreground. All right, and that's it. So let me deactivate those two masks to see the difference from before to after. Looking much better in my opinion. And that's how I use Lightroom's Tone Curve tool for very specific areas of an image to adjust those. Of course, we are not done yet with the masking stuff. So let me continue. I want to further work on the sky. I'm using a linear gradient with which I'm going to tuck the very top up in here. I do feel like I want to make this a little bit darker by dropping the exposure. At the same time, I want to 
keep some of these highlights in here. So I'm going to slightly raise the whites like this. All right. I also want to add a bit of glow or let's call it a light bloom effect behind our subject right in here. Therefore, let me use a radial gradient, which I'm placing right behind the tower. And then I'm going to subtract a radial gradient with which I'm overlapping that tower because we want that light spill effect to be behind it. So that's looking decent. In here, I'm going to bring up the blacks, which will add this very nice glowing look. And let me bring down the dehaze. This will make the glow effect stronger. All right, nice. If you want, you could also bring up the white balance temperature in here to, to make the glow effect warmer. Beautiful. I want to use another radial gradient with which I'm going to cover that bright spot in the sky on the right side. Again, I want to add a little bit of glow in here. So let me bring up the blacks and let me pull down the dehaze. Again, we could use a little bit more warmth, so I'm going to bring up the temperature like that. Perfect. And one more thing, let me use another radial gradient with which I'm going to cover a bigger part of the sky above the horizon like this. I want to make this area slightly warmer, but of course I don't want to affect anything in the foreground. So I'm going to click on those two dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select sky. This way I'm making sure only the sky is affected here. Then I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing some more warmth. And let's bring up the whites to introduce a little more brightness. This will also help separating the subject from the sky in the back. All right, nice. Then let me use a subject mask because we can also work on the church itself right here. Lightroom is selecting a little bit too much, so I want to modify it. I'm going to subtract a brush and I'm just going to roughly brush over a few things here to make this mask a bit cleaner. Let me bring up the feather. So I think that's okay. For the subject, I want to very gently push the contrast. I also want to bring up the whites, which will help introducing some more brightness. And I'm going to bring up the clarity. And let's see, I might want to push the temperature a bit more. And at the same time, let's see if I can play around with the saturation, maybe bring it down a bit. All right. And finally, let me add a linear gradient covering the very near foreground right here. Now I'm going to subtract a radial gradient because I'm going to use this linear gradient as some kind of vignetting effect, making everything around the subject a bit darker. So therefore just bring down the exposure. Perfect. That's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks now to see the difference from before with our base image to after. Looking so much better. Now let's focus a bit on the color grading. Let's see, I want to start in the color mixer. And I want to work on the hue for a moment. That means I'm going to target the purple hue and I'm going to bring it down, which will introduce some more blue tones in the very top part of the sky, because that area is made up of some more purple tones than the rest of the image. So we get a bit of color contrast going on in here. Then I'm going to switch over into the saturation tab and I basically want to push the saturation for most of these colors. So let's bring up red, orange, yellow and green for the foreground. All right. And I'm also going to bring up the blue saturation. Nice. Then I'm also using some split toning to get a little more creative with the color grading. Let's start with the highlights. I'm using a warm hue. So somewhere right in here. And I'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit because the colors are already quite intense. So we don't really need to overdo it. Then let's go into the midtones. Again, for the midtones, we can use a warmer color tone. So somewhere in the red range. And let's slightly bring up the saturation. Okay. Then, of course, we want to keep a bit of color contrast. Therefore, we are using the shadows. Setting up the hue with a cold color tone. And I'm going to slightly bring up the saturation. Just like that. Perfect. 
Finally, we can take a look at the calibration panel all the way down in Lightroom. And I'm going to just bring down the blue primary hue because I love this effect. And that's about it. Now, one more thing, you can see some quite heavy chromatic aberration around in that church tower. Don't worry about that. We can go into the lens corrections right in here and here click on remove chromatic aberration. If this doesn't help, we can always go into the manual tab and I'm going to bring up the purple hue slider like this. And maybe let's bring up the amount so we can kind of nicely fix that chromatic aberration this way. Finally, let's also do the sharpening in the details panel, of course. And here I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up, apply some masking while holding down the Alt key. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. So if this video was helpful and you want to support my channel, feel free to like and maybe even subscribe, leave a comment and hopefully see you all next time. Thanks for watching.